Hey crafty friends, this is Jenny from crafttestummies.com and uh, earlier this week I did a video on the Jane Davenport water brushes, they're called mermaid markers, and I've already had some questions about whether or not they're similar to the Zig Clean Color Real Brush, and the answer is yes and no. So let's take a look. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just uncap them and take a look. So as you can see, this is um, the Zig, and it is, by the way, very widely available. You can find them in big box stores, you can find them online, and they come in a ton of colors, which is great. Um, it has a relatively small brush, but uh, I'm gonna put my manicure at peril and show you that yes, they do separate, but it's a little on the short side. And this is watercolor paper. And if I just give it a little quick swipe across, you see that it is like a marker coverage. It's gonna pick up the tooth of this watercolor paper, but you can get some beautiful, nice, fine lines with it, which makes it really um, great for coloring, if you're coloring in small images. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing with the Jane Davenport. These are available in 12 colors right now at Michael Stores online and at the Jane Davenport website in the UK, you are gonna find that there is a much larger brush tip. This is much more like a water brush and the bristles are much longer. Um, also, what you didn't get a chance to see is when you first open them up, there's a little ring here that you have to remove. Then you give a little squeeze. The ink is readily available. You can see exactly how much you have left in the reservoir. It goes through this regulator tip and then out the top. And again, just to compare, the Zig is just more of a traditional marker, but instead of a felt nib, it has the brush. So this is more like a water brush, but with dye-based ink inside. And you can see that even without squeezing it, I go back and forth and I get what I consider like a complete coverage. This is like a watercolor in a pen um, or in, in a water brush nib. You can, get some nice fine lines. You have to be very light-handed about it. But by the same token, you can also squeeze the nib and get puddles of color, which then you can blend out. Now, both of these are water reactive. We're gonna give it a little squeeze with water so that you can see. <laughs> what I find is that the Jane Davenports are much more colored and intense and are really meant to be used more like a watercolor. They're perfect for blending and thinning down. The zigs are a little less so, a little more towards, again, like a traditional marker. Okay, so we're gonna do basically the same thing here. This is a smooth cardstock, something more like you would use for actually making cards or tags. Again, you can see if I just brush lightly across the surface, even if I push kind of hard, you're gonna get kind of this skipping motion because of the, brus the, the bristles of the brush. Um, but you can do some like kind of faux lettering. I'm horrible at it, but you get the basic idea. And let's try that same idea with the Jane Davenports. And once again, we'll add some water so you can see how they bleed out. Now just on first blush, on the cardstock, the Jane Davenports really wanna stay put. You see that after they go into the paper, they do not want to blend around. And um, I find that the Zig actually blend a little bit more or at least give a little bit more of a bleed out on just the plain cardstock. So here is a swatch sheet of the colors that I have of the Zig. And what I did here was create a little bit of uh, color on the page, just going direct onto it. And then I used a wet water brush to just kind of dip in and let it pull for a second. So you can see that it does lighten and lift. They are very blendable. They're a lot of fun. Again, this is on traditional cardstock. And you can even dip the pen in the water and kind of bleed it out too, which is a really fun effect. The 
plus of the Zigs are that they come in a bunch of colors, over 100 to 128, I think, um, and that they are very readable. They are a little on the pricey side, but you can get them almost anywhere. And here are the same color swatches with Zig on watercolor paper. And now you're going to see the same kind of spritzing comparison using the Jane Davenports. And here's just a fun way to use any water-based markers, really, but I wanted to show you the comparison. I'm just taking a little bit of water and I'm going to kind of just wipe it over an embossed image. This is watercolor paper, but I'm just kind of creating a little zone for this. And now what I'm gonna do is use my real brush marker and just kind of tap in some color and let the water carry it around. Now I find that because the brush is so small, you can see how it's gone white. That means that um, it's basically leached all of the color out of the marker, so I have to kind of dab it on paper towel in order to get some more to come down. And don't worry, the markers completely recover from this. And if you want it to blend a little more, just add a little extra water on top. Now just for comparison, I did the same process but using the Jean Davenport markers. And you can see that I got a much more vibrant, darker kind of true watercolor look. So in sum, I would say that these are kind of like having Doc Martens concentrated watercolors or hydrocolors in a pen barrel form, whereas these are like having maybe like a Tombow marker, but with a brush nib. So I like them both for different things. These are notoriously hard to find and or expensive right now, so you can absolutely keep using your Zig Clean colors without adding anything extra to it. I hope you enjoyed this video and comparison of the two products. If you did, please like, subscribe, check out some of my other videos, and as always, have a crafty day.